Recording. Hello. Today is March. Uh oh, March twenty seventh. This is how professional I am, Minister. Uh, March twenty seventh, nine forty six a.m. And I am on the line with. Why don't you introduce yourself, Minister? Well, my name is Lisa McLeod, longtime friend of Jody Middix. I'm the minister responsible for children, community, and social services with responsibilities uh, for women's issues, LGBTQ+, immigration, refugees, poverty reduction, and um, the Soldiers Aid Commission in Ontario. Yeah. So you're the minister of everything in Ontario almost. Uh, well, that's like. it's sort of the running joke around here, yeah. yeah. Um, we had an article come out the other day that uh, uh, some of the veterans community used to then suggest you weren't um, standing up in your job or something like, and I wanted to preface this minister with saying that, um, it's not you they're mad at. We know that, right? But why don't you break it down for the listeners, uh, and the viewers, this will be the first ever video Jody Minnick podcast. And you're the first remote guest, by the way. Yeah, um, thanks, where did this start? Well, you know what? This is interesting. Um, as somebody who's been elected uh, for 13 years in the Ontario legislature, just this week, actually, five terms, I didn't know until I inherited this ministry that uh, the first Veterans Affairs Office in the country um, was called the Soldiers Aid Commission here in Ontario. And it, uh, it, it was amazing. I, I met with the commission early on. And one of the things that I found out, and you know me coming from a strong military background with- uh, Yeah, your husband, a veteran, your dad was a veteran, half your friends yeah. are veterans like yeah so I uh, so I was really excited with this opportunity and one of the first things I did as minister was to see how I could expand it and what really disappointed me and as you know uh, you've been to Afghanistan uh, my husband Joe was there twice non-combat but with Minister McKay um, when he was defense minister and so I noticed that this commission only extends up until uh, veterans who were in the Korean War and I felt that uh, while that was important it's also important that we extend right up into current conflicts right we see so let, let, let yeah, me, sorry, I, I don't. I know I hate to interrupt you, and I and I. But this is the part that baffles my mind. Uh, I sat on on a political uh, uh, council in Ottawa as a city councilor. How does a law like that that starts in the, right after World War One uh, yeah. then get modified to only include the veterans of certain wars? Like, why wouldn't the like? How does that even come up? Well, it, it, because I know it, it's a long time ago before either of us were even born, but like how. What's the reasoning, do you think, behind them making it that, that narrow? So it is by statute, and so it would evolve over time. But in recent years, uh, for the past uh, 15 years, really, under the previous Liberal administration, uh, they chose not to expand uh, that uh, particular commission. Why do so, you think that is? Did it um, even come up? Do you remember it even coming up? No, well, again, somebody who sat here for that period of time, I didn't really I've never know. heard of it, and I've been yeah. a veteran for a long time, too. And my husband hadn't heard of it either as a policymaker in this field. So um, one of the first things I did is I reached out to Aaron O'Toole, the former Veterans Affairs Minister, for his input, uh, as well as Brian McDonald, who is a former uh, soldier, but also- Both good friends of mine. Yeah, and Brian, of course, um, came in and sat down with me at length because uh, what, not only did he serve in the military and he worked with Peter McKay as a policy advisor, but then when he got elected in as an MLA in New Brunswick, actually set up the, the Veterans and Soldiers Office there. So uh, we've been in consultations over the past number of months um, in how, how do I best change the legislation to not only expand the mandate so that it, it includes current soldiers, but also um, supports them better in, in right. terms of mental health. So I'm going to be making an announcement in the next uh, in the next couple of months on, on how I see that to evolve. But I think there's a really great opportunity here. And I will say, you know, the previous Liberal administration, one of the things I always, uh, I've been very critical of them over the years, but one of the things that I, I thought was important for uh, Dalton McGinty to do, and I think it was in my second election, was when he rebranded the, the Highway 401 in particular spots to the Highway of Heroes. I thought that was important. But then I think when Kathleen Wynne took over, uh, there was less of a desire to to be um, supportive of the, the community. And so it was very frustrating for me. But as somebody who uh, has always been a big supporter of our military, right. big supporter of yours. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and so anyway, I, I think we have a great opportunity here. So I'm looking to, to speak to the veterans community. Um, as you know, I'm a, a, one of the early uh, uh, members of the Barhaven Legion um, and have a big yeah. commitment there. So we're going to continue to consult widely yeah. and uh, have a great process of very credible people um, who will help me uh, move forward right. on the Soldier Aid, Aid Commission so that we can best support those uh, men and so, women. Um, so well, I, I, so yeah. just, just to, you didn't actually do anything that sparked this article. It just kind of fell 
out of the ether because it was already probably the, almost an identical article in January of 2016 uh, with a lot of the same people in it. And so this is just something they decided to reprint right now uh, to give you some more, uh, some more work to do, uh, and put and highlight it, which, you know what, frankly, like let's, as a veteran, I'm going to say, thanks for telling me there's 2000 bucks out there. I can access if I need it. And now you have a reason to put it at the top of your priority list. So I guess really they did us a favor because, um, you know, this legislation that we have, and I can tell you, like, there's a lot of programs, even the new veterans charter uh, that was federally mandated, um, you know, it didn't, no one asked me my opinion. And I was one of the guys that was going to be out there pulling triggers. And I get it, uh, you know, there's mandates and this and that, but how hard is it to just make something that's good for all veterans at all times? Uh, you know, there's not that many of us to begin with anymore. Uh, I think they said the population of vet Korean War veterans in Ontario is down to 12,000 or something like that from 28,000 just four years ago. So, why don't you just real quick tell us what you think is the easiest way to expand this and uh, and we'll silence some of the critics and hopefully make uh, give some hope to some of the folks or some of the veterans out there that might be waiting for something that can help them. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm, I'm glad this story came out because I think it's something we've been working on behind the scenes for a number of months and consulting with people, but it gives us an opportunity to actually highlight the fact that this is within the ministry, that uh, I'm proud of this program and that this program will be expanded and we're going to come forward with a consultation plan over the next couple of months and, uh, you know, we'll appoint some pretty credible actors uh, within the military uh, community uh, to lead that and uh, obviously I would hope that you would be involved, Jody, as someone who I, I trust and who I've worked with for many years. You got my and, number, Minister, anytime. I, do. <laughs> I got you on text message. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so I think there's a really good opportunity here and a great story that we can tell as a government. And, you know, our government came out very quickly and said we're going to do an Afghanistan uh, memorial at Queen's Park. And so oh, so wow. that's a play. We've, uh, we've uh, created a hotline uh, in our government uh, for veterans and uh, for soldiers in, in the in the instance that they need something and even small things like symbolic things like free fishing licenses so these are some of the what about I think, free hunting yes uh, <laughs> i want to get into hunting this year so i don't know how i've never hunted animals i've only hunted oh, okay. uh okay. the enemy so yeah, uh this year i'm hoping to bag my first deer um, yes, yeah, so I, I think we have a really good story to tell here, and I think that it's in line with where our government is in terms of wanting to um, to embrace the military community yeah. and our veterans, and I'm looking forward to doing that yeah. and consolidating a lot of it. But again, it does take time, and uh, I've been now 10 months in office, and we're going to be... It's been 10 I, months already? It's been 10 months already. Wow. See, I, you know, I recently had my issues, and I was kind of had my head up my ass for, for a while there, and I, I don't have cable, so when you texted me, uh, Kelly and I were actually in Hamilton on Monday for a sepsis thing. I don't know if you, do you know what sepsis is? No. It's uh, brutal and we can talk about it off air, but basically oh, we almost lost her in 2017 to sepsis and it's the number one killer in Canada. Oh uh, my uh, Yeah. Everyone, it's whenever you hear complications from uh, whatever, uh, it's sepsis pretty much. So um, if I'd seen your text earlier, I might've been able to come in and talk to you in person in Toronto, but but just uh, just so like this is the only provincial plan that's out there for veterans, and it was the first one overall, like you said, over a hundred years about a hundred years ago. And um, you know, this is something that you know shows that there's. I think back in the day, every level of government did their best for the veterans, but as the federal government took over. You know, that's when the, you know, people kind of let go of the wheel a little bit. And I know at, at City Hall, the mayor appointed me as the veterans uh, liaison for my last little bit of my tenure there. But, you know, there's a whole lot of consultation that's required because money runs everything. So will the vet, federal veterans affairs uh, ministry be involved with this at all? You know, I don't think so. Um, I'm happy to reach out, and, and I did reach out when Jody Rabel Wilson, um, or Wilson Rabel, I, I'm sorry if I got that mixed up. Well, um, I mean, don't, don't call the minister because they'll change every six months well, with you guys. But. I think, it, and that's sort of, uh, and that's too bad. But I had reached out to her um, when she was uh, temporarily in that role. And yeah. so I'm always happy to have the conversation, but, but I think uh, ours, uh, what I would look at is more of an enhancement um, yeah. and and uh, just a, a level of support for those in need. Yeah. And um, the other, it, 
issue that I'm uh, speaking with quite frequently, and I'm very excited about this. Mm -hmm. Our Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, uh, Steve Clark, and I um, are really excited about some of these veterans villages that are cropping up for homeless veterans across right. the province across country where they're doing it in Calgary. I think they're moving um, out to a location in, in uh, Halifax. And so he's reached out. We were looking at this um, a couple of uh, weeks ago. And so he's reached out to the organization to see if they're interested to come to Ontario. Awesome. So, well, you so know, we got, we got, uh, we got veterans house coming up here in Ottawa. Yes. You know that right at the old air yeah. base. So yeah. so yeah, like it's, it's really good that see, this is the thing, like I went on, on Twitter and uh, there were some tweets with hashtag, you know, Lisa should resign or whatever it said, you know, and, and I wanted to tell you from, from the veterans community, uh, we can be pretty reactionary. So try not to take that to heart and remember you're dealing sometimes with folks that are already at their wits end and, and we I both know. know how mental health can play a, play a part in how you react to things. But I... I, I took, I'm, I'm staying nonpartisan in this and you know me, like I call myself a liberal conservative or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the fact that we went through a war and this thing wasn't updated or highlighted or veterans affairs doesn't even seem to have remembered that it existed. You know, I guess we should give Patrick Kane uh, or he's the online reporter and uh, sorry, I'm looking at my notebook when I look to the side, just so you know. Um, and I guess there is another reporter that is the Queens Park reporter that did the live hit or whatever, but you know, they've really done us a favor. And I want to say that, and I'm sorry you got to do more work for us, Minister. But I'm happy guess, to do it. And we well, were doing the work anyways. Yeah, and, exactly. And so you're one of the people that I was gonna reach out to. And again, I, I like I said, Aaron O'Toole and uh, and Brian McDonald have been really helpful early stages of this. So it's been great. Good. All right. So is there anything else you wanted to add, Minister? I think like this doesn't have to be that long, and uh, I know how busy you are. Uh, it's only been, I don't have a, I don't even have a timing on my reporter. This is all new to me. I don't really, I'm doing this. Oh, all you're doing a great job. I don't even have a producer right now. I'm just doing it all by myself here. Uh, I, Kelly's I over there and the dog is there trying not to disturb us, but she's chewing on everything. Um, yeah. So is there anything else you wanted to add before we close this down? No, I think that uh, I appreciate the opportunity, Jody, to, to have this conversation with you, to get it out to the broader veterans community, hear directly from them about what they think we should be doing here. And uh, like I said, we'll be doing an announcement. Awesome. Um, the way the process works, as you know, having been in council, uh, these things have to go to cabinet committees, cabinet, glacial, that sort of thing. Glacial so process. So, yeah, you know, my fellow excited. veterans listening, uh, the minister is definitely on our side. Don't worry if, if I thought there was a reason to call her out, I would because uh, we're friends and we can uh, have a coffee later and, and, and uh, wipe our tears. But the point is that right now it's been highlighted and you guys are going to do your best and to get it as quickly as possible so we don't have any repeats of the stories. Like Kitchen, honestly, in that story, I remember that kid because I was at that scene. Uh, I was with in that unit. Uh, and so, you know, I might reach out to him to see how he's doing these days. Um, and, you know, anybody else out there, you know, there's always something to access. I'm just going to, this is my plug because I was on a uh, municipal council. Your municipality can help you no matter what. They can at least put you in touch with Veterans Affairs. If you don't have an address, I mean, most homeless people that I know uh, or saw uh, when I was on council had a phone. So they might be somehow listening or watching the podcast. So reach out to your municipal affairs office uh, and, and ask them for help and then work your way up the chain. Everyone's here to help, but the first step starts with the veteran. And that's one thing I wanted to highlight, Minister, is that, you know, um, we get very comfortable in the military life with, they tell us where to be, what to bring, and they feed us, and they get us there, and they, they give us all our equipment. Um, so, you know, sometimes you, and I know I went through this, you, you, you just are a little bit weirded out by how come nobody is there to look after me right when I need them, because that's what the military does. It's always there for you. But once you're on civilian side, the onus falls on you to, to take the first step before anybody else can, ha can know what you need. Um, so where can people find you, Minister? Do you want more Twitter followers or Instagram yes, or anything? Of course, oh. at McLeod Lisa, M-A-C-L-E-O-D-L-I-S-A, -E at McLeod Lisa. Uh, you can always email me um, at my constituency office, lisa.mcleodco at pc.ola.org. And uh, easy to find me online, uh, ontario.ca. And looking forward to hearing from everybody. I think there's a tremendous story to tell. Unfortunately, over the past 15 years, when this uh, legislation should have been updated, it wasn't. But yeah. it will be updated. Uh, it will be updated by this ministry and uh, this minister and this government. And, All right. Uh, well, that's a strong statement. Yes. Yeah, that's a strong statement. Well, thanks, Minister. Um, 
I'm going to let you go because you're a busy woman and I'm a busy man. And uh, I really appreciate this. This is a lot of fun and we should do this more often if you wish. I would love to. And, you know, Jody, I'm really happy to see you doing so well right now. Yeah, we're doing okay. Uh, you know, every day is a bit of a, you know, still a bit of a struggle, to be honest. Uh, Kelly and I are moving and uh, we want to set up our own little, uh, little, little, we're calling it headquarters. Oh, okay. So it's going to be in Stittsville. Uh, oh, okay. Out there. Yeah, so. Moving to the West you know, End. I'll, the West I'll invite, End. yeah, I'll, I'll invite you out when, uh, when we're ready to open and stuff. But, you know, basically I'm next to the range. So I'm going to get my gun therapy there and then I'm going to have coffee and bonfires. And it's going to be a good time. And, and you're awesome. invite, you have an open door. You and Joe have an open door invite, of course. And thanks buddy. I appreciate it. No problem. Minister, just let me do my thing here. Uh, this is the uh, Jody Medic podcast, the first recorded and by remote on uh, zoom.us. If you guys have to do any uh, remote meetings and you're wondering how to do it, zoom.us works for the Jody Medic podcast. So it'll probably work for you. You can find me, Jody Middick, at Jody Middick everywhere that matters. And uh, look, again, the minister get left her uh, credentials. Look her up. Try and only send nice emails, guys. You know, even if you have a, a beef, just try to be nice about it. You get more uh, flies with honey. And uh, she's a lovely lady. She really does work hard. And I'm not just saying this because she's a friend of mine. It's, it's what I would say even if I didn't know her. All right. And that's the Jody Mick podcast. And we're 